next step in configuring our NPM series is to name and configure our output channels, including setting up priority sources for paging and ducking, as well as assigning EQ presets to our loudspeakers. Once again, you can use the setup wizard to jump us to our setup screen for our output channels. Or we could navigate there manually by selecting outputs and then selecting the setup icon on the left. This master page should look relatively familiar as it looks a lot like our input master page, where we once again have a variety of sub pages you can use to fine tune each output channel. But for now, let's just focus on the general setup page. Just like the inputs, we'll start by naming the output channels and engaging a stereo link if applicable. Once again, we'll move from left to right using our next button and name and configure each of our channels. For this particular installation, we have a reception area, a main dining area, a bar which primarily supports the cable TV, restrooms, and the kitchen. Remember, these names will carry forward to other places like the MFC controller and the MP Manage app, which is why it's a good idea to name them accurately first. You can also establish a minimum and maximum output gain range for this region. For example, you don't want your bartender to be able to crank the sports channel so loud that it drowns out the background music in the main dining area. You also have access to an architectural audio delay, which comes into play if you're playing the same source through multiple zones. Once this is done, we can return to the setup wizard and check this task as complete. The next step is to assign sources. If you select the Output Sources button, you'll notice it returns you to the Output Configuration screen. But we're now on the Sources page. There are two main sections here, Priority Sources and Selectable Sources. Selectable Sources allows you to define the possible source options for a given zone. When you connect to this zone using either the wall-mounted controller or a smartphone, these are the options you'll see listed as available to play here. Simply select a name and then populate that source with the input of your choice. So if I only elect to have two possible sources in this zone, then the controllers will only see a list with two options. Remember to be smart about the kinds of input options you give. If your private room has no way of seeing those TVs in the bar, then you probably don't want to make that an option. If you select none, then no option will be displayed at all. If you're in the actual space, you can click the on button to activate that source and then use the level slider to adjust the music source level and balance those various sources. Or you can just tap the Q button and save yourself the steps by listening to this output from the Q bus output on the front of the mixer. Only one source can be active at a time. If you want a mix of multiple sources, you can use the mix output as your source and mix to your preference on the mixer screen, which we'll see in future videos. You may have noticed when selecting your sources that you could choose an output as a source for a zone. So why is that? Well, this is a convenient way to create a zone that follows another zone. Let's say we have some large surface mount loudspeakers in the bar, as well as some ceiling speakers in the booths at the perimeter. Since these are different types of speakers, you'll want to apply different EQ or factory presets, so you'll wire them as separate outputs from the mixer. But when the bar changes the source for the main speakers, you want those peripheral speakers to follow along and change sources as well. So in a case like this, simply choose the bar output as the only selectable source for the peripheral speakers and engage it. Now the bar control acts as the parent that makes changes for both of your zones. This setup is also a great method for driving content to subwoofers. Now let's take a look at our priority sources. These are sources that override the currently selected source. You can establish two levels of priority. A secondary priority source, for instance, will override all of the selectable sources, and itself will only be overridden by the primary priority source. The primary priority cannot be overridden by anything, and it will override all other sources, including your secondary priority source. Simply select primary or secondary, then the selection field, and then find your desired source from the list of names you've already assigned. For our installation, the old jukebox should override any BGM that might be playing, so we should assign that to our secondary priority. After all, if somebody is paying you money, their song should start playing. However, we want any paging announcements from the reception area to override all music, whether it's coming from the BGM or the jukebox, so we would assign that to the primary priority. 
You can adjust the level of this source, as well as decide if you want to override the current zone level. If somebody's turned the volume down in this zone, that means your announcement might not be heard, unless you choose to override that zone level, which means your priority source will always be heard at the level you decide, regardless of the levels currently active in the room. You can also adjust three controls for the ducker, which determines how smoothly the background audio is lowered when a priority source is active. The threshold is the level a priority source must reach in order for it to initiate an override. The depth is how much you want the current source audio attenuated down when the priority source is played. And the hold determines how long the ducker waits until the threshold is no longer reached before it brings your background audio back up again. If you have too short a hold, like if the speaker on your announcement mic takes a short pause, it might cause the background music to momentarily come back in the middle of the announcements. If you have several zones with the same requirement, don't forget about that copy and paste button. I can simply press copy on one zone and paste into the next zone, and it will take all of the source settings on screen from the first channel and apply it to the second. Once again, we'll return to our setup wizard when we're done and check off that we've completed that step. Let's do one last step in regard to our outputs. The next step in the setup wizard is to load our loudspeaker tunings, which will take us to the presets page of our output channels. Again, you could just as easily navigate to this screen by going to the master output screen and then select presets for the channel of your choice. Here, you can load presets for your favorite QSC loudspeakers that are listed under the factory settings. Simply select a family of loudspeakers, then the model you're using. If you're using the QAC Acoustic Design Series subsat models, you'll be prompted to choose a preset that represents the number of satellite loudspeakers connected to the sub. Before you select the recall button to load these tunings, you may want to consider these switches here. If you recall a preset, it will override the output channel's levels and sources, loudspeaker tunings, and processing blocks, unless you choose to omit them. We'll quickly go through now and assign the proper loudspeakers to each of our zones. In any case, just select the one that best matches your configuration. You can also load your own user presets if you have any, which could be located either in your MP install app storage, within the MPM device itself, or on a USB flash drive. You can move these presets from any of these locations to another using the copy buttons, and you can also create a user preset by selecting the Save Save As button to record your current channel configuration. Back in the setup wizard, we can check off this step, and next we'll start adjusting the input and output settings. Now, at this point, we've finished the basic structural setup of your system. The next steps are going to be a little bit more subjective decisions, like applying processing to your inputs or fine-tuning the loudspeaker settings. That means that everything up to this point you could easily do before you're ever in the venue, but the last steps are probably best completed with your system up and running. We'll take a look at these steps in the next video.